Hi, good morning. I'm making a little study, study, what is it? A test taking video. Yes, that's what I'm doing. Yes, I'm still getting my coffee going. So I'm gonna share screen. This is for everybody. Doesn't matter which class you're taking. So, uh, hello, test taking, here we go. While remote. So, cause you're on the internet, you're taking it, you're, you're using D2L. Okay, a couple things. Find a quiet place. Most important, find a quiet place. Do it at midnight if you have to. Do it at five in the morning. Make sure there's not little kids running around and dogs barking. So hide yourself in a closet or somewhere that you know you can be alone. Because once you start it, you're done. You have to keep going. Okay, so you can't start it and stop it. You have to start the exam or start the test or start the quiz or start the whatever. Keep going. Um, timing. I have, I've given you a couple ideas in class, but here it was another one that I just came up with this morning. Use your phone. So put your phone on the stopwatch time, the timer thing, you know, where it says like you can put in like the stopwatch is like, hold on, you can do like five minutes. So if you know you have um, five minutes, I'm always going to suggest um, how many minutes to use on each of the questions. So one of uh, one class this week, you're, I'm suggesting a five minute timer. I think it's 101. And 103. I don't know. I can't remember. But a five minute timer means you don't look at the timer up top on your quiz ever. It just stresses people out. It's stupid. But have a five minute timer and keep hitting that five minute timer. Every time the five minute timer goes, go to the next question and hit the five minute timer again and try to use the five minutes. Five minutes is a long time as long as you don't panic. Five minutes is a long time as long as you don't panic. And you won't panic if you stop looking at the time. So just have it on your phone. And I actually cover up, I use like a sticky sticky note and I cover up the, the timer on my, like the little timer that it has when you take the quiz on um, D2L because it's just evil, okay? So do that. Um, another thing is to have your phone or have, a, have someone to take a picture or screenshot of your PC. Um, you can do it on your PC, but if your internet is unstable, if you are afraid that you're not submitting and you're worried that it's not gonna submit, take a picture of where you are. I can see if you, um, like I just said, if a computer crash, I can see how long you were, you know, if you logged in, if you tried to take the test, I can sometimes see um, which answers you tried, but I can't always tell exactly what happened. So take a picture of where you are if something goes wrong. Usually it won't. But every once in a while, um, something happens, take a picture of where you are. And, or if you're afraid you're not submitting, take a picture of it. And that way, if somehow it didn't get submitted, you can show that you did all the questions. Okay. Um, what can you use on all of the quizzes while we're on tests and everything while we're remote? You can use notes from our class, homework from our class, labs from our class, anything that you wrote down on your notes and the lecture notes themselves, homework, all of it, lab, um, labs. But, so that's what you can use. You can have all of that out. The better you know it, the better you'll do. Um, so you can have those out and you can refer to them anytime during any quiz or test, okay? But you can't have any notes, uh, any quotes, sorry. You can't have any notes from anywhere. No quotes, don't use anybody else's words. No quotes from the book. No quotes from a different book, from other classes. No quotes from the internet. Don't use the internet. Um, no notes or concepts from other classes, people, friends. I don't want anything from outside of our class because I will, I can't, I, I can't, I can't assume where you got that. I have no idea where you got it. So we're using the stuff from our class only. Notes, homework, labs from our class only. If you use stuff from outside of our class, I cannot give points for it. Even if you got it, you know, like even if it was super ethical the way you got it or whatever, you learned it in psychology. I don't care about psychology. I only care about our class. And I have to do that just because, you know, we're online. Sorry. Okay. Okay, the nitty gritty, let's do this. So short answer style, short answer style. There will be short answer style on each, every, every no matter which class you're in. So I put in a couple here just to help us figure out the kind. Now, depending on which class you're in, this is gonna look really foreign. <laughs> so this first example is from a 101 class. And so if you're not in 101, it doesn't matter, you can still, it still can help you just to see the types of questions. This is a contrast question. There's always gonna be a contrast question or you know, a lot of times. 
Um, contrast means what's different, what's the same? Are they like each other? Are they a part of each other? Are they not a part of each other? Um, and so that's what you're doing. And look for follow-up questions and take the time to read your follow-up question twice. How similar, how are they similar and how are they different? That's what I wanna know. How are they similar? And how are they different? And the, the words are polar. I would underline them because I'm a visual learner or um, put, you know, read it again, polar and hydrophobic. These are the two things I'm trying to figure out. Are they similar? Are they dissimilar? And I want to write that down. The other thing I'm noticing is I need to make sure that it's two fragments, two thoughts. I don't care about grammar, two thoughts, two things, two bullets, two um, ideas. So Polar and hydrophobic. Okay, I need to remember what polar is. I need to remember what hydrophobic, hydro, sorry, hydrophilic are, and I need to relate them to each other, right? I need to relate them to each other, not just what they are. I mean, you can define polar. A polar molecule is a molecule that will dissolve in water, and it's got poles, right? It's it's not the same on one side as the other, right? It's a little negative on one side, a little positive on the other. You can define it but that doesn't contrast it with hydrophilic, does it, right? You can define them, but make sure you say, are they similar, are they different? Make sure, okay? So that's two fragments, good, all right. Um, and you could always tr try this and then bring it to class and put it, you know, and we'll go over what you wrote. Okay, next question. This is for a different class, so don't worry. How is, this is 103, how is cephalization or turning point for animals Use terms involving symmetry, sensory organs, and it should be at least five fragments, 10 points. You see how the points are different? This is like a brain dump. This is a different type of question where this is a brain dump. You're going to tell me everything. You're going to get your note. You know, you got your notes out and you're like, I got to say everything. This isn't just like a contrast. This is like everything. It's 10 points. I want five fragments. So you're going to be writing. You can use bullets again. You don't have to write full sentences, but you can say like, okay, um, as soon as we, you know, as soon as we have bilateral symmetry, uh, now we have two ends. Now we have head end and a tail end. Now we start to see cephalization, which is a brain, right? Or, or a head end really is what it is. And then we start to see a brain. And then we start to see with a brain come sensory organs like eyes with eye or, you know, with smell or with a taste. Do you see how I'm like dumping? I'm brain dumping and those are all fragments, okay? So that's a big brain dump. That's a different type of question where you're going to tell me kind of that whole stuff, all that stuff. So 10 points means tell me a lot. Five, five or six points means I only want a little bit, okay? I just want a couple things. Really just answer that question, okay? Here's the last one. Here's another one. Doesn't matter which class you're in. This is for AMP. Um, it is a crap. That's a mnemonic. Is a crap used to describe all epithelial tissue or just some of them? Explain with at least two fragments at six points. So this is not a big long answer, right? This is two fragments, this is two thoughts, two bullets, two sentences. And so a crap has to do with epithelial tissue, and it's like remember it's um, avascular and cellular and regenerative. So um, and so I would look through my notes and like, okay, wait, does this have to do with all of them, or are there some of them that it doesn't have to do with? And it does have to do with all of them. So I would say. But I mean, I'm going to take a moment to sort of like think about this, right? And look through my notes or think about it. Um, yeah, they're all super cellular. Yeah, they're all super polar. There's a top and a bottom. Like we talked about the lumen and the basement. You can put that in there. But remember, it's only two fragments, okay? The last thing I failed to put on here is sometimes there'll be more than one question. Just make sure you answer. If there's more than one question, so if it said, is a crap, um, you know, used to describe all of them, explain with two frag, maybe I would say, maybe I could have two questions. Is a crap used to describe all epithelial? Is a crap used to describe some um, connective tissue? Let's say it has the two questions and it's not, but let's say it has the two questions. Then just make sure you answer both questions, okay? I always recommend reading the question at least twice, right? And underline what it says, underline your nouns, okay? Underline what I'm asking for, cephalization, animals. Um, it actually, in this 
this one here for 103, you know, I would also make sure I circled the words that had to do with the things I need to put in there. I need to say something about symmetry and something about sensory organs. And the top one, polar and hydrophilic. And then I would maybe say something about similar and different. So taking time to read the question twice or three times is good. Okay. Um, true, false, fix it style. Um, true, false, fix it. Always fix it. Don't just write false because it will. It, that's not right, right? It'll be marked incorrect. Always fix it if it's false. Leave it if it's true. So if it's true, just don't even worry about it. Or you can write T next to it if you want or whatever. But if it's false, fix it. So that means like fix the problem. If you are confused, this is what I wanted to say. If you're confused, rewrite it in your own words, okay? Rewrite it in your own words. If you feel confused about what it's saying, rewrite it in your own words. Make it true in your own words. Even if it was true, make it true in your own words. That'll help you determine what I was trying to say, okay? And then always read it two or three times. Always read it two or three times. Underline stuff if you want, but always read it two or three times. So I've got one, an example from each class, just you know, to give us different style, different types of questions, okay? So it helps breath everybody. This first one has an and in it, okay? Remember, if it says and, everything has to be true when there's and. That means there's like multiple sentences. So it says the, the three worm phyla. Okay, I would underline that. Maybe read it twice. Three worm. I want to talk. I want to do more worms. All I care about is worms. I'd look at my notes. Worms, worms, worms. <laughs> and then I'd say, okay, I'd find it. I'd be like, annelids are annelids worms. Go to the next one. Nadaria, are they worms? They're not. But I, I'd go to the next one and still look it up, but I'm not done, am I? I still need to figure out if Platy Helminthes is too. So anytime I have and, I'm looking up more than one thing or I'm thinking about one more than one thing. So I would say false because Nadaria is not part of it. So I could say F, um, it also includes nematode or something like that, okay? The next one down, the hypoderm. This is for um, AMP. The hypodermis. So I would underline this because it's. I got. That's what I'm talking about. Is the hypodermis. The hypodermis is made up of this something and the and something else. I got to check two things. It's made up of adipose. So first I'm going to check the adipose, and it's avascular, and then I'll check both of those. Right. So checking two things. Is it adipose? That part may be true. Yeah, that part is true. So. That's good, I would leave that alone, except that I gotta check this next part. So remember to check the whole sentence. So avascular, that's false. So I would write F and I could just write it's vascular. I don't need a whole sentence. If you wanna write a whole sentence, you can though, okay? Um, and then the last one's for 101, eukaryotes and prokaryotes both have cell walls. So you would look in your notes, see if that's true, but see how I've got an and, so I've got a, I've got to look up, are you, do you karyotes have cell walls? And then I've got to look up, do prokaryotes help with cell walls? Right? I have to look up both. Okay. Okay, and then um, always read your questions twice. So even like fill in the blank and matching, which all of your tests, in these classes, we'll have things like fill in the blank where you just fill in the blank, right? You write in the word or matching. Read it twice, just in case. Read it twice, just in case. Just read, I mean, I know you've taken these types of tests before, but read it twice, just in case. Um, good. And then one more, before we talk about study ideas, one more very important thing. You will not be able to learn the material on a test. Um, tests are for what you already learned, what you already know. So don't, don't go into a test. You're not going to have enough time to learn everything. Even though you'll have your notes out, you can't learn what epithelial tissue is or what a craft is or what a prokaryote is. You can't learn it in a test. You can't because that's not what the test is for. But so you can have your notes out, but you have to understand your notes. Does that make sense? So don't expect to get on a test and learn. No, you're not going to be learning what the content is. You're going to be telling me what the content is, but you certainly can look at your notes. Does that make sense? So notes help, but they certainly can't learn it during the test. All right. Um, 
I, I guess I need to emphasize that just a lot because, um, you know, you will run out of time on a test if you don't know the material, okay? Because you can't learn it. You just don't have time to learn it. Okay. Um, study ideas. This is your awesome study ideas. This is you becoming the teacher. What's really good is write your own short answer or true false fix it. What's even better is send them to me. <laughs> What's even better than that is ask me, write some and ask me to create a Google Doc or a discussion board to post on so that everybody can use them. What I've found is that people that write practice short answer questions and practice true false fix it always, always get A's, always, because they know how to, they know, they understand how to write the question. If you know how to write a question, then you know how to read the question. Because a lot of times y'all are studying, but you haven't taken enough of these types of tests and you're like, go fast. But when you learn to write one, you learn to read one. Does that make sense? So if you ever want to write a short answer question and share it, you're also helping the class. So you're like a main player in the class and helping the class. It's super awesome. And I love it. And I, we have all these jam boards. We could put it up on the jam board. I'm so excited. Please do it. Anyway, you're going to do great. I'm not trying to scare you. I was just trying to help you with this um, tiny little video. Just um, sorry about my hair and everything. But I just this morning, I wanted to put that together because I want you to do well. And I just want you to start thinking about how am I going to get ready for this test? And how do I, you know, how do I, what I do during the test? Remember to, that your notes are like really important. So the more organized your notes are, the more you know where things are in your notes, the better because you're going to be looking at your notes. It's okay. Look at your notes, <laughs> but understand your notes. And that's the other piece. Know your notes, know where they are, understand your notes, and you're going to do great. You're going to do amazing. Yay. I'll see you in class.